Hello everyone and welcome back to A-Level Psychology. This is Social Influence Lesson 8, Resistance to Social Influence. In the first part of the video, we're going to look at social support and the locus of control, both explanations for resistance to social influence, and then we'll have a look at a six mark outline so that you can see how it would all come together in an essay or in, in an extended writing answer. In the second half of the video, we'll then have a look at a couple of evaluation points and some exam questions. So, let's get started. Social support refers to the idea that the presence of people who resist the urge to conform or obey can help others to do the same, because they act as models or allies in the situation and show that resistance is actually possible. Now, we've already learned something about resistance from research that you would have already covered in social influence, specifically Ash and Milgram. So if you remember, in Ash's unanimity variation, the conformity rate dropped to as low as 5.5% when a non-conforming confederate was introduced. Milgram did a similar variation, although you may not have covered it when you actually did Milgram, but in this variation, the teachers were paired with one of them being a dissenter, who would eventually refuse to continue. And the findings were very similar to Ash's, with obedience rates dropping to around 10%. Now, social support increases the chances of people resisting the urge to conform or obey for several reasons. Firstly, it reduces the pressure of normative social influence, because if there's a dissenter, then you're not going to be the odd one out, which means that you're not the only one that's going to be rejected from the group. And in terms of obedience, a dissenter challenges the legitimacy of the authority figure. So again, you're more likely to disobey. Both of these then increase a person's confidence and make it easier for them to act independently according to their own morals, beliefs, and values. The second explanation for resistance to social influence is the locus of control. Now, this was first proposed by Rotter in 1966, and it focuses on how much control people believe they have over the things that happen to them. People with an internal locus of control believe that the things that happen to them are largely controlled by themselves, whereas people with an external locus of control believe that the things that happen to them are beyond their control, guided by fate, luck, the environment, other people, and so on. For example, in an exam, somebody with an external locus of control might blame the teacher for making the test hard if they do badly, or they might use luck to explain why they did well. Somebody with an internal locus of control, on the other hand, would see themselves as the reason for doing badly or doing well. So maybe they focused their revision too much on another subject, or perhaps they found a really effective revision technique and have been working really hard for the exam. Either way, the result is down to themselves and not to others, whether that result is good or bad. This means that people with an internal locus of control are more likely to resist social influence, and that's thought to be for two main reasons. Firstly, somebody with an internal locus of control takes responsibility for their actions and experiences, whether those are good or bad, and that means that they're more likely to act according to their own beliefs and values. Second, people with an internal locus of control tend to be more self-confident, more achievement-orientated, have higher intelligence, and have less need for social approval. And all of these personality traits are linked to a greater ability to resist social influence. People with an external locus of control, therefore, are more likely to be affected by the pressure to conform or obey, and are less likely to show independent behaviour because they believe that what happens to them is not controlled by themselves, but is controlled by external factors, and that they don't have complete control over their life. Therefore, they're less likely to take responsibility for what happens to them. At this point, I would just like to point out, using my fancy drawing here, that although we talk about people having an internal or an external locus of control, it's not always a case of people definitively being one or the other. The locus of control is more of a continuum that stretches all the way from being highly internal on one side to highly external on the other. In between the two extremes, you've got all the varying degrees of internal and external. So, for example, somebody could have a low external locus of control, and they would be somewhere between the two extremes. 
So I hope these two theories have made sense. And before we move on to the evaluation points, I just want to show you how all of this would come together in a six mark outline. So in mine, I've started with an outline of social support. As you can see, I haven't talked about Ash and Milgram because you don't have to. And I've simply said what social support is and why it influences resistance. My second and longer paragraph is all about the locus of control. Here, as you can see, I've used more detail simply because there's more to say. Okay, notice the key words that I've put in there, things like acting independently, reducing pressure, taking responsibility, and so on and so on. Remember as well, my outline isn't the only way that you can do this. You can cut bits out, you can add emphasis in different places, you could add Ash and Milgram's research to your social support outline. There's loads of ways that you could get the marks. This is just an example. So now we'll move on to some evaluation points. They're all fairly straightforward, but there are two that I'm gonna go into slightly more detail for. So the first one is a real world application for social support. So as you can see, it's a fairly standard bread and butter question with some research in an everyday setting. Okay, you've got Albrecht et al from 2006, who found that pregnant teens who have social support were more likely to resist peer pressure to smoke than people in a control group. However, you can do something quite nice with this point, and you can extend it a little bit by putting it into a real-world context and explaining why this is actually an important finding beyond the fact that it supports our theory. So, this is what it would look like if you were just going to write the point as it is. Okay, but you could add something like this on the end. Okay, so you could talk about the fact that research findings like this have got really important implications on other areas of society, because if I can stop pregnant teens engaging in smoking, I can also stop pregnant teens potentially from engaging in other dangerous and damaging behavior. That means that the knock-on effect on things like healthcare providers is also going to be very important because I can potentially stop health issues before they even become an issue. Okay? Examiners will love the fact that you've gone a step further than simply remembering the point and you've actually considered the implications on a larger scale. Now, your next two points are, again, fairly straightforward points. You've got some more research support for social support by Gamson et al., who asked participants to work in groups to run a smear campaign for an oil company. And they found really high levels of resistance because people were working in groups. So they found that 88% of participants rebelled, showing that peer support is linked to greater levels of resistance. And then you've also got some research support for the locus of control by Holland in 1987, who repeated Milgram's study and also measured whether participants were internals or externals in terms of their locus of control. And they found that people who were internal were less likely to continue to the 450 volts. Okay, so again, a nice, simple piece of research support. Now, our final evaluation point is a limitation of the locus of control, and that is that it is a limited explanation for resisting social influence, because Rotter says that actually the locus of control is only important in novel situations rather than in familiar situations. Because when you're in a familiar situation, past experience might be more important than your locus of control. So again, here's the evaluation point. Effectively, they're saying that if you come to a situation where you have conformed or obeyed in the past, then chances are you're going to conform or obey again, and your locus of control is less important. Okay, so that makes it a limited explanation for resistance. It doesn't make it a worthless explanation. It just means that we have to be open and aware of the influences of other factors alongside the locus of control. What I'd like you to focus on here is my first sentence. So really often I see essays that have three or four really good evaluation points. But very often these evaluation points are written as if they were individual points rather than points that are all linked together because they're all in the same essay. So people tend to write one strength of X is Y and then they follow it up with a limitation is that and then they finish it with another strength is that. But there's no kind of indication 
that all the points are together in the same essay. So what you can do is you can use some really simple sentences like this one that I've got here in this evaluation point that just links to the previous point. Okay, so it shows that you're aware that there's some continuation between your evaluation points, and it'll help you to form a really logical and structured line of argument throughout the essay. Again, something that the examiner will love. Okay, so if you consider that this could be your fourth evaluation point or your third evaluation point, and the one before it would be your support for the locus of control, and so a little sentence at the beginning there would just give a nod to the previous point and show the examiner that you're aware that everything is linked and that you're kind of trying to create a nice structure going through the essay. Okay, so those are your four evaluation points. We're just going to finish off with a couple of exam questions here. So you've got four exam questions on this slide. Um, the first two are fairly standard outline questions. The first one will require a little bit of condensing, so you've effectively got two marks for social influence and two marks for the locus of control. So just make sure you get the most important bits in when you write this answer. The second question is more straightforward, it's just a simple outline of the locus of control. The third question is a sneaky outline and evaluate for six marks. Okay, you might not have come across a six mark outline and evaluate, but you've effectively got three marks for your outline, so it's a bit of a condensed outline, and you've got three marks for your evaluation points. That is one evaluation point. If you've got time to put two in, put two in, but one should be plenty to get the three marks, provided it's well written. Okay? Now your final question here, question four, is an application question. So the question effectively wants you to pick out that Daniel is more likely to resist, and then explain that he's got an internal locus of control and what that means. An important note for this question is that there will be no marks available for talking about Matthew. Matthew has an external locus of control and he's less likely to resist, but that's not what the question wants from you. The question just wants you to talk about who is going to resist, not who isn't going to resist. Okay, so Focus your answer on Daniel and ignore Matthew. Right, and then just one final question for you. This is an application essay, and this is a really, really popular application essay for teachers to put in mock exams and end of unit tests and just essay practice questions, to be fair. So discuss two explanations of resistance, and as part of your discussion, refer to the views expressed by Jack and Sarah. Okay, so first and foremost, you need to work out that Sarah is talking about social support and Jack is talking about a locus of control. After that, you need to remember your basic application essay structure. Okay, so you've got six marks for your outline. You need to outline both social support and the locus of control. You then have four marks for your application. So this is where it becomes important to identify what Jack and Sarah are talking about. But it's also really important here that you link it to your discussion. Even if it's something as simple as this means that Sarah's idea of the presence of others being important is supported by research into real world applications. And then kind of doing it that way. Okay, this is somewhere where people very often trip up. And that is the last exam question that I have for you. So that brings us to the end of the video. I hope it's been useful. If you have any questions or if you are confused about anything, please drop me a question in the comments section below and I will do my best to get back to you ASAP. Thank you very much for listening and I'll see you in the next one.